Hey YouTube, welcome back. Here we are again, doing more track. We're gonna do RMC Raptor today. Um, I'm gonna show you two different methods for modeling Raptor track and what you can do to make a solid that you just sweep through your no limits data. Or if you actually wanna go and make something a little more representative of Raptor track, we'll go over that as well. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Um, straight from the patent itself, this is kind of showing you what you need to build at least, you know, a left rail for, um, you know, the regular RMC track. You're going to do the same thing for a Raptor. It's just adjusted for the size, and then you just need to make sure you have a left side running surface. So we're going to go kind of quickly to talk about how would you do like the easy or poor man's RMC track style, um, going from no limits and bring it into like, like SOLIDWORKS that we're going to do today. You need three points to make a plane. Then you just need two curves to sweep on, which is very straightforward and easy. So I'm gonna do it really quickly and you can too. Now, if you've watched the other episodes, making three curves, the left, the right, and let's say like our down, which I guess in this image, it should actually be moved over to like here, should be pretty straightforward. If you watch the 4D coaster, you watch the Intamin, you know exactly how to get these curves. So. I'm gonna skip over that, you know, a little bit here, just kind of dive right into it. This is the data that we have from No Limits. We derived it, we've created this sheet that you've seen a million times that just takes our track section and just divides it into our 11 points. So, you've seen this, nothing new. Um, let's just dive right into it. So you imported your curves, um, you're ready to go. This is really straightforward. I'm gonna be very quick with this. You make a plane on these points, uh, not the edge, the actual point of it. There we go. We'll make a sketch. We will bring in all of these guys and reference them. It will look funky. But at least you get something to sketch on. And then you can go to town. So the best way do this, make sure everything's perpendicular, make some construction lines. And for this demo, I'm just going to make it look close. I'm not going to make it perfect because this is just illustrating how you would do like the poor man's version. Or I call it poor man's version. But uh, you know, this will go all the way down. Just got to make sure everything's you know, perpendicular itself. Oh my gosh. People don't have mufflers around here, apparently. <laughs> Actually, that, that looks pretty good. And then we will make this guy. It's, I don't know. This, this. Make sure everything's perpendicular. Which, oh my gosh, it, it is totally not. That is. There we go. I was like, why can't I adjust this? I gotta adjust the point. Okay. So, from here, we have our outline. You can go and dimension it however you like. For this example, I just did something that can work, something that shows you what we're doing. Get rid of some of these. All right, so there you go. Um, we have our profile, and we should be able to sweep it. Look at that. Now we need to make sure we line up to the guide curve. And there you go. Bada bing. Look at that. Looks fabulous. <laughs> so yeah, make it in the RMC track. So this you could 3D print, turn this into an STL file. And like, you, like you've seen before, this looks exactly like our other track sections that we've done. But the coaster enthusiast in me is like, oh, that, just a solid that's not actually how they make the real thing so i want to spend the time to really dissect how we would actually model this um you you can do cool things you know with this um to make a 3d printed model but let's like really go into the nuts and bolts of how you would make 
you know, all of these features to create a track that looks exactly like one. So let's do all the points. So this is gonna be probably the most curves we bring in. This is probably more curves than the 4D, but once you set up the equations, it's just plugging in the new data set for the next track piece. You did all the math. It's not like you're doing more. So this this should be pretty trivial. All we're gonna do is we're gonna do our left, our right, a secondary left, a secondary right. Do the exact same thing projected down. So you're gonna do the exact same equations down. And then you go down one more time to get the full distance. Now I think a Raptor track is 15 and a half inches wide and we'll, we'll go and just you know set that up. I'm gonna go kind of quickly, but if you've watched the other episodes on how we set this up, it should be trivial. This shouldn't be anything new. Um, and, and that's the other thing too, is like, as you watch these, you're like, wow, Matt's just doing the same thing. It's just different manipulations of the data. And that's the point. That's why you can do all these episodes and get different track sections. So the new thing is how will we make the plates? And that is where I want you to stick around. So let's dive right into it. All right. So we got our setup on what we're gonna do here. Let me just make this a little bit bigger for everybody. Um, so first, uh, uh, we're gonna start with the track age. We're gonna get our lefts. We're gonna get the secondary lefts. Then we're gonna bring everything down. I'm gonna kind of skip through pretty quickly this, but I still want to just you know put it out there so everyone knows what's going on. We get our rail gauge, which we then divide by two, which will be our 0.19 meters. And then we do our left and our right rail, which I'm going to do the exact same method that we've done before to get these. So let's just do it. Let's have some fun. Left is position X plus our left X multiplied by our, tri or our track gauge. So nothing new there. This is pretty trivial. And we're gonna go down. So, Let's do the next one. Boom, okay. So we got these two points and maybe we'll, let's do this. I will put a little circle that's a color green on the ones we have. So we got that guy and we have, oh my gosh, that guy. So for the next uh, section of video here, I'm gonna go and get all the rest of the points and you can watch really quickly. But if you're wondering, what am I doing? You can take a look at the other videos on the actual equations to get there. I don't wanna waste everyone's time going over how we get these curves. Watch the other videos. It's it's all up in here, you'll, you'll figure it out. Um, so let's go from there. Second rail distance. This is just a number that I picked. I actually, if you look at this, it almost looks like it's divided into four. So I just divide into four. It might not be perfect, but let's just go and do that. So here we go. We're gonna get the secondary left and the secondary right. And let's do it. And now we have these points, okay? So now, this is where it gets cool because we can build off of these points that we already have. So instead of referencing our center point, right, which actually would be here, and I'll make this just a new color. Um, so this is what we were basing these off. We don't need this anymore. We can actually just bring these points, these green ones downwards. So if I take my nifty little arrow here. We're just gonna bring this down like so. And if you watch the other videos, how do we do that? You take your up and you subtract it from those. So that's what we're gonna do. We're not gonna use this point. We're just gonna bring all these down like this. And that is how we will get those points. And then we'll do the same for the even lower ones. We're gonna take this guy and go all the way down. And that is how we will get those lower points. So. That's what we're doing. So that's all we're doing. Watch the other videos. I'm gonna skip ahead and let's take a look here what we're doing. All right, so we've gone through all the equations to get these guys. I'm just gonna show you what we got. So right up here, we have our left and right X. We have our secondary, which is by this distance. 
Then I went all the way down to make our four corners, which is the lower sheet metal, which is what this is. And then this is the running surface, like the side friction walls, and then the upside or upstop walls. So that's what this left down X, left, or sorry, left rail down, right rail down, left rail down two, right rail down two. And that gives us all of the curves necessary to build a legit RMC track. So this was our easy poor man's. Let's do another one. New part. We're gonna save it in our directory. We're gonna call it RMC test. And bring in our curves. And there they are. So it looks like the skeleton of what an RMC Raptor track would be. Now, unlike our little poor man one, we're gonna make this more legit, more correct to the aesthetic of what an RMC track would look like. And this is the cool thing about doing all these different track things. I get to show you other um, ways to model the track, which I always find it fascinating. It's like, there's always different ways to do this. So in this method or tutorial, we're gonna do surface boundaries. So this is a boundary surface of the top, then we're gonna do a boundary surface of the bottom. You could even do a ruled surface. That's kind of what we're doing here too. Um, but I'm going to set up everything as if it was just a surface. And you're like, okay, cool. Surfaces are great. And it doesn't take a lot of computing power to do this. So let's get all of our surfaces. And we are just connecting the lines, making everything. And I need one more. There you go. Now that probably looks a lot better. You're like, ah, cool. Um, but it doesn't account for our plate thickness. Okay, hang in there. So we're gonna do thicken. We're gonna select our plate. Um, I'm just gonna do 0.01 for right now because it looks okay. And we're just gonna take everything and thicken all of those surfaces that we just made, right? And then that will actually create the track. So let's just do this. We're gonna go uh, the other way here. Um, thicken this guy. And this is all one part. Um, you can also do it as separate, but I'm just doing this to illustrate like how you would go and make this guy that way um, and just go one by one making our plates oh don't like that one there we go and thicken and thicken bam so look at that now let's turn off the surfaces turn off the curves. We're gonna hide everything. Oh, I guess I gotta do it this way. Okay. So, you may be saying, well, Matt, you got a gap here. It's not perfect. Well, if you were to go and manufacture this, you need that gap for your weld bead. And you can tack it. And I'm sure if you Google search RMC, they have tons of videos, images of how they do their track. They actually tack it and then, well, they'll, they'll put the bottom on tack everything to the ground. Then they'll go here, tack it, and then you can run your actual uh, production bead. Um, you could, the cool thing too is you set up these distances in Excel. You can make those spacer plates that they use to go and weld it. So um, like, you know, they patented how you put this together. So it's not like you can't go and do it. But if you wanted to, you know, in my case, laser cut some track pieces out of wood or use, you know, some other material, you could probably do it the same way. It's just an I-beam. Nothing crazy special here, but you know, another couple things you'd say, well, um, you know, that Matt, this episode is really quick. You know, this, this is just, you know, short and simple on how to make two different styles for, you know, whatever project you're working on. If you want to dive into how would I, you know, set up supports, how do I set up, you know, when they connect these, they, they have like the plates, they have holes. There's a lot of other things that they have going on. So, if you want to start diving into, okay, I have my track, now what I do? Well, remember in the last episode, I love how these all link together. We, we brought in the point cloud of all the points that were necessary to make our trust. Well, in this episode, I can show you, if we bring in our points for the track, you can use that point cloud per, which 
you really didn't even do any other math because this is just coming straight from your Excel. So it's not like extra work. You just have to bring it in. And you can use these points to set up planes, set up geometry, to put in those features that you need. So for example, I'm gonna do a quick and dirty way of showing you how I can put in you know, holes to connect um, these track pieces. So I just make a plane here, and you can even use the hole wizard. Um, I don't know if all CAD programs have that, so I'm just going to um, you know, do it this method. So first, I'm just gonna get some construction lines here uh, with the geometry. I should be able to convert um, this point, bring it to the sketch, it's a little off. Um, so this isn't an exact science, but you're gonna have some tolerances anyways. I would just make these holes big enough so that you can go and thread some fasteners through. So if you wanted to make this like a really big, Let's do this. I just want to make this a construction line. So I know they have like some hole at some, I don't even know, I don't know, like 0 0.025, maybe. Let's do 0 0.03. There we go. That looks uh, better. <laughs> and let's uh, mirror it. So we're gonna mirror it to make sure it's spaced across perfectly and we will make our extrusion cuts here. And let's go all the way through there. Bada bing. Oh, did I go the wrong way? Oh yeah, yeah, we gotta go the other way too, okay. All right, there you go, get your holes, right? All right, and you'll be like, okay, but there's, there's more than just two. Understand, we're gonna do a curve driven pattern. We're gonna follow just the edge here of this guy and then we'll just grab these two and uh face normal will be here um spacing i guess uh maybe one more that kind of looks right and look at that now you have your through holes that you can then go underside weld your nuts once you weld your nuts then you can have your bolts and go through have another plane up here and you got it you do the same thing down at the bottom you can put your holes for your supports use the points that are using to construct the track to then construct other geometrical features. Now, the last little itty bitty uh, bit of information is when, when you have these plates and these surfaces, you can then go into your surfaces, do a surface flatten, which will then take that uh, surface and project it into a flat plane. And then you can send it off to your laser, your plasma cutter, your fiber laser, whatever you're gonna cut it with. And that is how you get RMC Track. So there you have it. We have RMC Track. Thank you for joining me. Please like and subscribe to the channel. We are talking about everything coaster fabrication related, uh, which you're not going to get anywhere else, at least not from an actual engineering perspective that I know of. So thanks for joining. I know these videos can be dry, but I'm trying to cut ahead as we really dive into the material on how you can do different types of track styles. This is RMC Raptor. If you want to do an RMC traditional, you know, two rails left and a right, same same method. You just, you know, don't put the side or side friction and up stop on the one side and you go from there. Um, it is more points and you're going to have to do a little more math up front, but you can do it. So with that, I will let you guys go. This has been a very fun video. Oh yeah, bike coaster cutouts are cool, they're great. We'll do some videos on those too in the future. I just wanted you guys to um, you know, learn how to use no limits data. So see you at the next one, peace.